Hi you guys, my name is LaToya. Welcome to my crafty space. What I'm going to be doing in my space today is, do I even need to say what uh, layout I'm going to strive to use? Same old card sketch, just gonna let that float on by and you guys should know about it due to the last five videos. <laughs> Okay, anyhow, so I have out my What's Cooking set and my Frosted Gingerbread set and my Sweets and Treats set, which these are bundles that I own. This is not a bundle, I don't think. I just have the stamp set. I didn't buy anything else with this. I just wanted the stamps. Um, And I'm just going to get busy because I kind of have an idea in my head and I really wanted to find a way to make these two sets mesh and looking at these two you wouldn't think they would go together because the design is different again i'm not an artist i guess in my mind i'm an artist let me stop being hard on myself okay i'm an artist i'm crafty i know what i'm talking about <laughs> so anyways the style on these two stamp sets as you can see they're clearly different but i'm going to make these two jive Let's see how I do. A little personal challenge here. Okay, so I need a base. I'm probably going to work with cream. That's easy peasy for me. So I'm just going to... going to blend. You can use soft suede or crumb cake to get this like lighter color that I'm going to get with my Distress Ink to ink blend. Okie dokie. I know I want to ink blend, but I'm wondering if I should stamp anything first. I kind of have like a recipe card kind of in my head for some reason. So, recipe, I think of cursive, you know, grandma, whoever else used to write in cursive, very nice. I like writing in cursive. I enjoy journaling. So I'm going to bring another stamp set into this mix, but don't worry, it is also current. Okay, so I'm going to use this script here because that will give me the, I already had it sent off to the side. <laughs> I didn't get to put it away from last time, but it'll give me like the script, like recipe card look that I want. I think that'll work. Now we're going to do some ink blending. Now, if you don't know how to ink blend, all you do is take your brush, which it can be a cheapy brush from Amazon or the Stampin' Up! brushes or Tailored Expression brushes. I have the Amazon brushes and Tailored Expression brushes because I purchased them before Stampin' Up! came out with their brushes and I'm not repurchasing <laughs> any tools I don't need. So you just dip your brush in it, then you swirl off on your glass mat like I have, and then you take a little bit of color and you're just gonna slowly blend it onto your paper, like so. Light hand, you're just pressing very lightly. So you can see the transfer of color. It's really easy once you get the hang of it. Okay, now for this part, I'm going to do some stamping and then I'm going to do some coloring. You can use the Stampin' Blends, which are alcohol markers. I have to use the mediums that I have on hand, so I'm going to be using my Copics because I need alcohol markers to do what I'm about to do. So I'm going to use these awesome images here in the corners because, you know, that's what we're going to use when we make cookies. So, I think these three here will be nice. That's what I'm thinking. Could be wrong, y'all. <laughs> For my card design, it's going to be that. And then I'm going to have my gingerbread cookie, like right here in the middle. I'm wondering if I should use the bowl anywhere. 
No more second guessing. Just going to, y'all, I just have to do. That's what we're doing around here. We are just doing. So I'm going to stand my images. And yes, if you have a messy or anything, remove your foam backing here. I just don't, y'all probably seen a lot of my videos and it probably drives some of you guys crazy and I'm sorry, but it doesn't bother me. So yes, man, this is sticky. These are just some of the stickiest images I've gotten so far. All right. How cute is that, right? I love it. Okay, cool. So to do some coloring, I want some red because of Christmas. And I'm going to go with my basic red color combo. So if you're doing this with Stampin' Blends, I would say just take the twos that come together, the two reds that come together, and use those. We definitely want a vibrant red here. And that's what I'm going to use. So some red, I'm going to make my measuring cups red actually. I'm going to make this handle red and then these are going to be brown. Now, if I would have thought this through, I would have had this in the middle instead of having the two browns next to each other, but oh well. <laughs> this is just to show you guys, like I'm for real. I literally figuring this jazz out as we go along. All right, so I'm going to stamp this here, this awesome cookie out. And I'm going to do it in some crumb cake. Soft suede, I did it earlier and it's just a tad too dark for me. Just looks kind of burnt. We don't want any burnt cookies now, do we? Perfect. Now I took out a piece of brown cardstock because I think that's what I'm going to back and edge everything with. Yep, really like that. So, like I said, I have the bundle. So I'm going to take my dies. I'm going to run this through. Sarah just got sniped by Cassie, but it was totally Sarah's fault. Huh? up at me and I'm like, that was your fault. Okay, you guys, so I decided to stamp out this cookie a few more times because I'm like, oh, you know, that looks nice, but maybe I might want more than one. So it's, um, I did it for a just in case. Well, I'm glad I did because when I was going through, these are my die cuts. This is like my die cut swatch, quote unquote. I basically run all my dies through, or I'm trying to as soon as I get them, put them in the little baggie so I have them as a reference point to just easily figure out like what kind of die cut I want on my card. And for this one, I took out the circle from Beautiful Friendship, which, okay, I sat over here. And I was like, oh, maybe that'll look nice. Even though the edges on this cookie here is already kind of like decorative, this might be too ornamental, but once I put it down and I put the cookie down, I was like, oh my goodness, this looks like a decorative plate or like my fiance said, a doily, <laughs> but still really cool for a bunch of cookies to be on. And it just goes with this card I'm creating. Like I'm so over the moon. So I'm going to go ahead and die cut these cookies out and then figure out if I'm going to have something on the back for this here. All right, so I have out a few of my embossing folders that are current. I'm going to try to use current items. What I want to do is give this doily, quote unquote, some texture so it's not sitting plainly and whatever sits on top of this will look nice. Now this here is just, don't mind that, whatever. So I think I'm going to use have to figure out, oops, figure out what this is. I really wish Stampin' Up! would label their embossing folders because I didn't label it and I have no idea what this is. 
So I have to get out my catalog to see. Okay, this is the Tasteful Texture Embossing Folder. I found it. <laughs> I think that will give me the look I need. Now, I do have all of my embossing folder swatches inside of a bag. And I can like run through and see, you know, what's what, what, what looks like. But I don't really think I need that. I already know the kind of look that I'm going for with this. And I decided the perfect sentiment for this will be from the Itty Bitty Christmas set. I really love the Oh What Yum. It's small. It's perfect. I really love the size because it doesn't hide any of the extra work I did here on the sides. And it just goes with a card. Like you see this card and you're like, oh, what yum. Yes, it looks yummy. So I put that down to just see how I would like that there. All right. So I'm going to run this through and still need to figure out the bottom portion that the cookies are going to be sitting on top of. Oops. Oh, that's too perfect. Ah, so perfect. Like just the right amount of texture, you guys. I love that. Plus, I can't remember the last time I played with an embossing folder, so super happy about that. All right, now back to figuring out making this a circle and that gold ribbon I had on this I'm not putting down okay so you guys saw me very nervously trace to make two circles for my plate and here it is this is as good as it's going to get and it looks spot on enough for me for my little scene here um yeah i don't think i want to do too much i don't want to do too much i'm not really an artist i i don't want to creatively express myself anymore i think i've expressed myself enough with trying to make this darn plate all right so then that spot there i can just cover with that i would decorate said plate but i feel like there's already like a lot going on and I just made it it's just yeah I'm just gonna now I need to stamp out my sentiment all right so what do you do with cure packages or goodies you send to people you tie it up with twine and you make it look pretty so I was like okay I'm going to do the same thing on this card and that thought did not fail me I was playing around with some ribbon and then I realized I can't use that ribbon because it's not stamping up. <laughs> the brown ribbon I have isn't stamping up. So I just wrapped a piece of twine around and then tied a very simple bow. Um, I might make it a little smaller and I think that that'll be perfect. You know, just not too much now I just need to figure out my sentiment and I'm still a little hmm about this plate I think it needs something I need to figure out what that is I need to figure out what that is I just don't know what it is yet when in doubt stamp it out right I think I just need to do that. Anybody else feel crazy when they stamp out something four different times? Yeah. Can you say necessary? <laughs> huh? oh, I feel like a crazy person, but one of these is going to work and that's what matters. So I decided on those white sentiment, well, cream sentiment, and I just used a square die cut. Now I'm just ink blending around the edges really quickly so it can blend seamlessly into this little spot here. And because, I don't know, 
I just did great with placing the bow. I can like put a little hole here and just tie it on so it looks like a little charm. You guys, this is so much fun. Flick out. There we go. All right. And I think this is the most, like, ink I've ever put down on paper. <laughs> like, ever. I really need to get my Copic markers, like, cleaned and refilled, but that's going to cost, like, a couple hundred dollars, so that's not happening. All right. So I absolutely love my little cookie plate, and you know what? That, like, ties my card all together. Oh my gosh. Y'all, I love this so much. So now it's time for me to assemble it. You guys, I got so caught up in my card being finished that when I was taking pictures, I noticed that I was missing something. And that's the ink blending around the cookies. I can't, I can't believe it. So I actually made a note for myself to distress the cookies when I woke up this morning because there was no way this card was going to go um, undistressed in that area. Okay, so now that I distressed everything on the card, including the cookies, now you guys will see a recap of all the products I used to create this, but of course I'm going to be showing the card with the cookies undistressed because I recorded that video and then I ended up sleeping on it and then I'm like, oh no, I didn't distress the cookies. <laughs> and I'm not about to just like go through my stash and pull out everything because I already cleaned up my craft space. My goodness, you guys, I am done with this card. Here's the sketch. What a great jumping off point the sketch was. Oh, I just love this so much. There is so much texture. There's dimension because I propped up my cookies. Of course, I propped up my little doily and then my doily has texture. And then this distressed background. It is just, there's so much love. I have so much love for this because I'm loving how my card making style is evolving. And not everything will be vintage like, but I just like how I'm bringing different things together and just really using my imagination and playing with different stamp sets to get um, a look that I want. And I wanted like a recipe like card for baking and look at this, I got it. So let's do a quick recap, okay? So starting with the back, again, this back here could be early espresso. I'm using my leftover basil card stock, which is like a deep brown, but I'm going to be getting early espresso soon. And then I used cream for this card because I knew I was going to distress blend on it and I wanted to have this vintage look. I used some black ink for this script sentiment here from the VV set. <laughs> it's just what I call it, <laughs> which is so perfect. Like if you need any kind of like just beautiful script, this fits the bill. So I just did that in black and then I distressed the edges with an oxide. But again, you can use soft suede or you can use crumb cake. And then I stamped these images from the What's Cooking set. Again, I own the bundle, but I did not need the dies for this. And I wanted to play with the images that you would use for baking. And these just turned out to be so perfect. I just used two different types of ink to color. I used my alcohol markers, but you can use your Stampin' Blends if you have blends because those are alcohol markers just like Copics. And each color, like the reds, I use two colors. The browns, I use two colors. And it just came out perfectly, especially with the sketching. And I decided to do those in red for the measuring cups and the handle just to make it look holiday-ish because, you know, we love playing with things that are red and green around the holidays because it just, you know, makes us happy. 
So that's from that bundle there. Again, I just needed the stamp set. So if you only want to buy the stamp set, go ahead. And again, I'm not product pushing. These are just things I own and everything I buy, I love. So I'm only, you know, going to say what I do like and own. All right. So then this doily, quote unquote doily, this die, I ended up turning into a doily because I sat the die down and I thought it would be great to fill this space. And I have used this, um, die in a different card also this die is from the encircled in beauty set this die set is phenomenal i do have the bundle i have the stamps with it i've yet to play with the stamps i've played with these dies twice they're just so cute and what i did to make this look more like a doily is i added some texture to it and i did that by way of my embossing folder this embossing folder again everything i'm showing you guys is current it just gave it the perfect amount of texture. There's nothing else I can say about it. And it just made it look phenomenal. So then when I placed my circle, this plate here is actually a circle die, which there's circle dies by so many different companies. I don't own Stampin' Up! Circles, but you can use Stampin' Up! Circles. I just already have them. So I'm not going to rebuy something I already own because you know, money scarce. So anyhow, I took the circle and I made my own plate and all I did was color that with alcohol markers. It was a little daunting at first, but it was something I needed to do because just having a cream piece of cardstock here in a circle was not giving me enough like um, separation between the cookies and the doily. And then when I did draw the circles to make the lines to make it look like a plate, it still was too bland. So then I colored with my Copics and I did a bit of shading, which you can see for dimension and all that. Like my brain's just like, oh, you should do this. You should do this. So this turned out to be lovely. And I love the red plate against the cookies. And it also picks up the red and the utensils, um, the baking tools over here. Because again, holidays, red plates, just everything's pretty and red and vibrant and it just makes you so happy. So I really loved that and that helped my cookies stand out. And these cookies are from the Frosted Gingerbread bundle. I purchased the bundle. I did not get the sweet because personally I did not need all of that. I ended up using the outline die here and I ended up using this stamp. And because I had so much going on in my card and I only wanted a few things to be like the focal point, I did not use these cookies. I just stamped the same image three times and it's just absolutely perfect. And then I propped up, I left one um, cookie flat, the other propped up a little bit with the glue dot. And then this one I propped up with foam tape because I just wanted a gradual build for the stack of cookies. To Last but not least, like I said, I used the twine here. That's from the Baker's Twine Essentials pack. Y'all know anything that says essential, I'm going to buy it because it's essential. <laughs> I'm joking. It's not. But uh, for my stash, it actually is. So I did indeed buy two of these because these are neutrals. They're great colors. You can use them with everything. And I just cut a bit off. I wrapped the twine around and made the little bow. And then I'm like, okay, what kind of sentiment should I put here? Because right here was a little blank. And I'm like, okay, I can put a sentiment here and not block these images as much because, you know, they're beautiful and I wanted them to be seen. So then I took out my itty bitty Christmas set, looked at the small sentiments and oh, what yum fit so perfectly. It's like so perfect, right? Like it covers my wooden spoon just a little, but that's okay. It's adorable. So I stamped that out and then I distressed around the edges and then I used the same color cardstock that I have back here to map my sentiment and I housed it right underneath my little bow and I cheated just by using some glue and gluing my bow over the little hole I punched on my sentiment to make it look like a tag. Yeah, you guys, we don't have time to like weave stuff through. After you make a bow, if that bow is gorgeous, just glue that mug down. <laughs> so I'm just saying, you know, crafty secrets. So anyhow, that is my cookie holiday Christmas gingerbread card like it's just so delightful and I've like thrown this card in front of my fiance's face like six times <laughs> and now with the final project he's like oh my gosh and I'm like I know right so I love this I cannot wait to make more of these or you know something similar it's just so delightful anyhow I hope you guys are inspired and I will see you all in the next video so I hope you guys do something crafty that makes you happy talk to you later
拜。